In this video, we're going to talk through a few more representations and ideas related to binary numbers. I'm going to start by talking about some simple operations that we can do in binary, and we're going to start with the idea of addition. So with addition of binary numbers, things are fairly straightforward. We just add the numbers as we would any other numbers with one special case that we'll need to talk about. And that would be the case where we have one plus one in our values. So let me just walk you through each of the different cases that we can have with addition. We could have zero plus zero, which is of course equal to zero. We have zero plus one, which is of course equal to one. One plus zero, which is also equal to one. And then we have one plus one, which is actually equal to one zero. The reason being is that this is the number two, right? If I take one and one and add them together, I get two as a result. So this is really the main like special case that you have to worry about. The other cases are very standard and intuitive. When we actually deal with adding numbers together, you'll see that the two plays into it as a carry, much like you would have a carry in normal base 10 addition. So if we have, um, let's say zero, one, zero, zero, like this, and I add these two numbers together. So if I add these numbers, I get zero, one, zero, carry the one, and then we have one plus zero plus zero, which is equal to one. And you can see that this is intuitively true because this is um, four and two, which would be six. This is four. If I add those together, I should get 10. This is eight and two, which would give us 10. So you can see that that actually does give us the proper results. So that works as expected. So that's the idea of addition. You really just have to remember these four cases. And then as long as you have those four cases in your head, you're going to be able to do any sort of addition of binary numbers. And of course, it does help to convert to decimal and then um, you know convert back to binary if that's something that you want to do. But being able to think in binary makes the process a bit quicker. Now, in addition to adding numbers, I want to talk a little bit about signed binary numbers, because signed binary numbers are something that come up a lot in low level programming. And if you see them, and you don't know that they're signed, it's actually going to be fairly tricky to understand exactly what's happening. So let's discuss the idea of signed binary numbers. And to do that, I want to talk about the groupings of binary numbers. So with binary numbers, we typically group them in sets of four. So we would have four digits, and then four digits. And the reason why we do that is because basically each of these represents like a unit of memory typically. So when you combine eight of these bits together, you end up with a byte, right? So that's sort of the idea of what we're doing when we're grouping these together. So typically we would see eight bits as a single byte of data, right? So this would be like a single byte of data, and then we can further divide it into four, um, into four bits each in order to get the idea of sort of like um, half of a byte, right? So when we're looking at this, the way that we represent signed numbers, that being a positive or negative number, is using the topmost bit of the binary number. So when we do this, what we do is we say, if a number is negative, we're gonna set that bit to be a one. So for instance, if I wanted to make the number negative two, I would have one, zero, zero, zero. 0, 0, 1, 0. This represents that the number is negative. The rest of this is the binary number. So this here is the number 2. So that tells us that it's 2, but it's negative because of this 1 in front of it. So that's the idea of how we represent um, negative numbers. We just allocate the top bit to be the sign. A 0 would mean that it's positive, and a 1 would mean that it's negative. Now, something kind of interesting happens here. If, if you remember, in normal arithmetic, we have some rules related to addition and related to subtraction. So if you take the letter A, say that A represents um, some number, and we add it to the negation of itself, what we would get is we would get the value 0, right? So this is a law in arithmetic. And ideally, we would want this law to also apply to binary numbers. Now, it doesn't currently, because we have 2 here, or sorry, rather negative 2. And if I were to add that to just 2, what I would get is I'd get 0, 0, carry the 1, and then we would get 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. This gives us negative 4, right? And that's not what we were expecting. We were expecting it to actually equal to 0. So the question is, how do we keep these, this, um, this inverse here actually true? Because we want this to be true in order to mimic our normal arithmetic. 
And the answer to that is we apply something known as a two's complement to negative numbers. So aside from the sign bit representing a negative number, what we're also going to do is use a tool known as two's complement to help to represent these values. So let me demonstrate exactly what that means. Let me erase some of this here. Suppose that we start with the number two. To take the two's complement of this number, I start by first inverting all of the bits. So all of the zeros become ones, and all of the ones become zeros. This is called the ones complement. So this is the ones complement here. To get it to two's complement, what I do is I add one to this result. What this gives me is it gives me zero, carry the one, and then I get one, 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 and then one, 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 one. This is our twos complement. This number here satisfies this condition that if I add it to the positive version of itself, I end up with zero. Let me show you. If I then add this number to the value two, like this, what does I get is I get zero, zero carry the one, zero carry the one, zero carry the one. You can see that this pattern is going to continue on and on and on until we end up with zero. Of course, there's a carry of one, you know, all the way over here, but remember that the top bit is representing the sign of the number. And typically when we work in like assembly languages, that one goes into a special register known as the carry register. So we wouldn't even really see it. We would just end up with these zeros here. So you could see that that actually allows us to create the inverse of these values. So this is the way that we typically represent our negative numbers. You can see that the top value is still a one representing a negative number, but now it also satisfies this a plus negative a equals zero. So we get to keep that arithmetic property with us while we're doing these additions and subtractions. So this is something that I wanted to mention because oftentimes you're gonna see these things come up inside of assembly. Um, as I was working through the ARM videos, there were actually a few situations where this two's complement idea came up. And if you aren't familiar with it, it might seem a little weird that all of a sudden in the register, you have like this absolutely massive looking number. Um, but in reality, this is what's happening where this negative value is appearing because of the fact that we're inverting the bits and adding one to them in order to keep the negative number satisfying the required properties. So thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about hex numbers so you can better understand how hexadecimal fits into this, which is typically the standard type of notation that we use when we're representing binary numbers in a way that's um, sort of easier to read for most people.